What if I tell you that we've been wrong all along about the temperatures of these distant worlds? Well, that's what the recent data from European Southern Observatory seemed to suggest. Many planets that we previously thought could harbour life are shockingly colder than anything we've previously imagined. The coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 89.2 Celsius in Antarctica, but that's a summer day compared to the frigid temperatures of some planets in our solar system. First off, how do we measure temperature in space? Well, it's not as straightforward as sticking a thermometer out of a spaceship window. Scientists use intricate instruments that can detect the tiny amounts of heat energy that celestial bodies emit. This energy, often invisible to our eyes, can be translated into degrees on our familiar Fahrenheit or Celsius scales. Now, when we talk about the coldest places, we aren't just talking about a winter's day in Siberia. We're talking about temperatures that can freeze gases like nitrogen and oxygen, turning them into solid ice. In our solar system, the outer planets, the gas giants and the ice giants, hold the record for the lowest temperatures. Take Neptune, for instance. It's the farthest planet from the Sun in our solar system, and its average temperature hovers around a frosty negative 351 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 213 Celsius. That's cold enough to freeze almost anything instantly, but Neptune isn't the coldest. As we venture further into the cosmos, we find celestial bodies with temperatures far, far lower. Some of them are right here in our solar system, others lie in the distant reaches of the universe. And Neptune and Uranus, known as the ice giants, are not just colder than Earth, but they are colder than any human could possibly imagine. These two planets in the outer reaches of our solar system take the chill to an extreme. The average temperature on Neptune is a bone-chilling negative 353 degrees Fahrenheit, that's negative 214 degrees Celsius. Uranus isn't much warmer, with an average temperature of negative 357 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 216 degrees Celsius. For context, the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was a relatively balmy negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 89.2 degrees Celsius at the Soviet Vostok station in Antarctica in 1983. So why are Neptune and Uranus so cold? These are not your average gas giants. They're composed mainly of heavier volatile substances, often referred to as ices, like water, ammonia and methane. These compounds form clouds in the planet's atmospheres and reflect sunlight away, contributing to their frigid temperatures. Another factor is their distance from the sun. Both planets are located in the outer solar system, with Uranus about 1.8 billion miles from the Sun and Neptune a staggering 2.8 billion miles away. To put that into perspective, Earth is a mere 93 million miles from the Sun. The vast distance means that the Sun's warming rays are spread out and much less effective. In spite of their frigid temperatures, these planets are anything but static. Uranus has the coldest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system, yet it also has surprisingly active weather, with massive storms that whip around the planet at speeds of up to 560 miles per hour. Neptune, despite being farther from the Sun, is warmer than Uranus due to its intense internal heat. These ice giants take the term cold to a whole new level. They give us a glimpse into the extremes that exist within our own solar system and make us appreciate the relatively cosy conditions here on Earth. But hold on to your thermal suits, because Pluto, a dwarf planet, takes the crown for the coldest planet in our solar system. Yes, that's right, we're talking about Pluto, the little celestial body that could. Despite being demoted from planet status, Pluto is still a record holder in our solar system, boasting an average temperature of around negative 375 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 225 degrees. Now, that's a chill that would make even the hardiest of penguins shiver, but what factors contribute to Pluto's extreme cold? Well, there are a few key reasons. The first is distance. Pluto orbits the Sun at an average distance of nearly 3.67 billion miles. That's about 40 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So it's not surprising that the sunlight reaching Pluto is far weaker than what we enjoy here on Earth. Second, we have Pluto's thin atmosphere. Composed mainly of nitrogen, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide, the atmosphere is so thin that it can't effectively trap heat. In fact, it's so thin that during Pluto's long, long winter, it freezes and falls to the ground. Imagine an atmosphere that literally freezes solid. 
Finally, there's Pluto's axial tilt. Much like Uranus, Pluto's axis of rotation is severely tilted, meaning one pole is pointed towards the sun, while the other is in perpetual darkness during each half of Pluto's 248-year orbit. This results in extreme seasonal changes, where the planet experiences half a century of continuous sunlight, followed by half a century of darkness. Pluto might be small, but its temperature is incredibly mighty. But if you think our solar system is cold, wait till you hear about the exoplanets in other star systems. As we journey beyond the confines of our solar system, we encounter worlds that redefine the concept of cold. These are the exoplanets, planets that orbit stars outside of our own solar system. And among these distant worlds, there are some that make even the coldest corners of our solar system seem downright tropical. One such exoplanet is Ogle 2005 Bal G390 LB, affectionately termed the Snowball Planet. This exoplanet, located some 20,000 light-years away from us, has an estimated temperature of minus 364 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 220 degrees Celsius. That's colder than any planet in our solar system. So how do scientists estimate temperatures of such distant worlds? It's all about the planet's distance from its star and its potential atmospheric composition. You see, the closer a planet is to its star, the more heat it receives. But on the flip side, the farther away it is, the less heat it gets. In the case of Ogle 2005 BLG 390 LB, it's located quite far from its parent star, which is a red dwarf. Red dwarfs are cooler than our sun. So even though Ogle 2005 BLG 390 LB is closer to its star than Earth is to the sun, it still receives less heat. Then there's the matter of the planet's atmosphere. An atmosphere can act like a blanket, trapping heat and making a planet warmer than it would be otherwise. But Ogle 2005 BLG 390 LB is thought to have a thin atmosphere if it has one at all, which means it doesn't trap much heat. So imagine standing on the surface of Ogle 2005 BRG 390 LB. You'd be enveloped in a cold so intense it's difficult for us to even comprehend. You'd truly be standing on one of the coldest known worlds in the universe. In the vastness of space, our solar system's temperatures seem almost balmy in comparison. And now for the grand finale, let's turn our gaze to the coldest known place in the universe, the Boomerang Nebula. This cosmic spectacle, located in the constellation Centaurus, is a chilling wonder indeed. It boasts an estimated temperature of negative 458 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you prefer Celsius, negative 272. That's just a single degree above absolute zero, the lowest possible temperature that theoretical physics allows. So what exactly is absolute zero, you may ask? Well, it is the point at which all molecular motion stops. It's the end of the temperature scale, the bottom of the thermodynamic barrel, if you will. It's where heat goes to die, and it's measured as zero Kelvin, or negative, 273.15 degrees Celsius. At absolute zero, atoms come to a standstill, and classical physics takes a backseat to quantum mechanics. Now back to the boomerang nebula. Why is this celestial body so incredibly cold? The answer lies in its unique structure. This nebula, shaped like a boomerang, as its name suggests, is a star in the late stages of its life, shedding off layers of gas and dust. As this material streams away, it expands and cools significantly. It's much like how a can of compressed air gets cold when you release the pressure, a process known as adiabatic expansion. This nebula's unique shape and the speed at which its gas is expelled create conditions perfect for this cooling effect to reach extreme levels. It's so cold that it actually absorbs heat from the cosmic microwave background radiation, the residual heat left over from the Big Bang. This makes the Boomerang Nebula the only known place in the universe to do so. So, the next time you complain about the cold, remember, it could always be colder. Much, much colder. And if you like this explainer, we believe you would also enjoy the video shown on your screen right now. Click on it and let's catch up there.